Hello, high school basketball fans. Tonight we're at Crestview High School in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium for a key Northwest Conference encounter between the Columbus Grove Bulldogs and the Crestview Lady Knights. I'm Dave Bowen, and my right-hand right man sitting to my left tonight is Josiah Stober, who will be doing color commentary. We've got the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, 8-1 and one overall, 2-0 and zero in the Northwest Conference. They average 54 points per game on offense. They give up 32 defensively. Crestview, 9-1 overall, 2-0 and zero in the Northwest Conference. They average 57 points per game and give up 32 points per game. Josiah, great to have you here. The legend of Spencerville High School, 2005 big man. A guy, ladies and gentlemen, that I had to coach against and he gave me nightmares. What do you see tonight as far as the keys between these two teams? Yeah, well, just excited for this game. Such early on, you know, in the season, just after the holiday break, we look at both teams, as you said, one loss apiece for both of these teams. You know, and just looking at the keys for this Columbus Grove team, you know, they have to be willing to take care of the ball tonight. You know, their coach said 19 turnovers a game isn't good enough. They got to get better taking care of the ball, you know, and they got to protect the paint. They got to rebound, you know, and force contested shots, make it difficult for this Knights team. You know, for your home Crestview Knights, you know, 9 and 1, 2 and 0. Oh, as you said, you know, they got to get the ball inside, got to do it early, look to try to get Maya Etzler touches as much as she can inside the paint, get her in a good position, and also have to find ways to limit Ock Booty and Nesby. We know Ock Booty, Lauren comes in 20.4 points a game, so they got to find ways to limit her touches. Excellent, Josiah. Let's look at the starting lineups. For Columbus Grove, they will be starting the uh, aforementioned Lauren Hockmoody, the 5'7 junior guard, number two. Number 10, Jade Siebker, 5'6 senior guard. Number 21, Kendall Palti, a 5'9 sophomore guard. Number 22, Abby Stetscholdy, a 5'6 senior guard. And number 23, Nicole Nesby, a sophomore forward. She's the second leading scorer on this Grove team, averaging 12 points a game. For Crestview, it will be Maya Etzler, the 6'2 senior post player, number two. Number three, Casey Gregory, the 5'4 freshman guard. Number four, Ellie Klein, the 5'5 junior guard. Number five, Callie Gregory, the 5'10 senior guard, leads the Knights with 16 points per game. And Josie Kowicki, the 5'5 junior guard, number 21. Crestview controls the tip. Callie Gregory has it out front. Here we go, Josiah. Gregory in the half court. Columbus Grove opening up in a solid man-to-man -man defense. Casey Gregory with the ball out front. Coach Gregory calls the set, looking for a flare screen. And again, they're looking to go inside. They do to Maya Etzler. She hands it off to Ellie Klein. She slices and dices, goes up with the left hand, doesn't come away with it. And good hustle by Casey Gregory. Crestview maintains possession as she knocked that ball off of number two, Lauren Ockmoody. Yeah, good first possession there by Crestview as they almost get it inside again. And a good take there by Callie Gregory. Two attempts now at the basket, unable to finish. And we're going to have our first whistle of the game. A great time to introduce our officiating crew, Aaron Braun, Eric Klosterman, and Scott Steinbrunner blowing the whistle this evening. That foul is on Lauren Ockmoody, her first, team's first. And Callie Gregory is at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Check out Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. So Callie Gregory hits that first free throw. She is an 81% free throw for, shooter for Crestview. Second on the team. Goes two for two. Crestview dents the scoring column first. Lauren Ockmoody. Yeah, it's the Bulldogs, but she's a Bulldog. As you said, averages 20 a game. Northwest Conference first team selection. She, it's going to run through her, Josiah. Yeah, and we'll see her get the ball often as we see a shot early. Knocks it in. A big three to start the scoring for this Bulldogs team. Ock Moody, nothing but cotton. And Grove goes with full court pressure. Ellie Klein breaks it. 
Kicks it to Josie Kowicki, up fakes and goes to the hole, and she scores. Josie Kowicki, not known for her scoring. She's a maximum role player, does a lot of those other things, but gets a bucket right there, and that does nothing but make the Crestview offense look that much more potent. Yeah, and Crestview does a good job of breaking that pressure early from Columbus Grove. And as you said, Josie Kowicki doing a good job. And on the other end, right back at it, is Lauren Ockmoody, but it goes out of bounds and another possession for the Bulldogs. Yeah, penetration right there, and Ockmoody, again, under control, not going to get a charge on her in that type of penetration because she's seeing everything, does a nice job of jump stopping, just doesn't go for her. But Grove retains possession, running a little flex on the under out of bounds action. Nesby inside, posting up. They can't get it to her. Ockmoody with the ball, Nesby with the ball screen. Good hedge by Maya Etzler. Kicking it around, double deuces there. Abby Stetschulte with the ball. She's a good three-point shooter. Working it around. Callie Gregory gets a hand on that pass by Kendall Palti. It'll be sideline out of bounds for Columbus Grove. See if they have a set they want to look to go to. Your set is to get it into number two's hands. <laughs> number 10, Jade uh, Siefker with the basketball. There's a shot by Abby Stetschel. He doesn't go. Goes over the backboard. That's going to be out of bounds. Crestview plays good defense. They get the basketball. Yeah, and Columbus Grove will come back out in that full court pressure. We'll see that tonight as they want to try to speed up this Crestview team, seeing if they can get a turnover, but Crestview does a great job and breaks it. Josie Kowicki with the bucket. Give the dime to Casey Gregory. Nice jump stop in the paint. And bounce past her teammate. But Lauren Ockmoody says, you can pass it to each other, but I can drill it. Nice three ball fading away. Yeah, we're going to see that a lot tonight. The main threat for this Bulldogs team. You know, we're going to have to see if Columbus, or as Crestview, can find a way to limit her touches, maybe double her in the future to try to get it out of her hands. Double her, maybe go full face guard, but right now Columbus Grove has six points, all coming from the shooting hand of Lauren Ockmoody, two for two behind the arc. Crestview under out of bounds. Callie Gregory has it out top, goes behind the back. Spins, looks to get to the 10. Nice help defense by Stetschulte. Josie Kowicki, one-on-one -on -one driving line right now. Going into Maya Etzler, going against Nesby. Maya, determined, doesn't get it. Nesby, good defense. She gets the rebound and stays inbounds. Nicely done. Here come the Bulldogs. Yeah, Nesby did a really good job on that last possession, making it difficult for Maya Etzler, who was really determined, as you said, to try to get that shot up, but held her ground and got a good rebound. Now a turnover for this Bulldogs. Ellie Klein looking to go coast to coast. LA to Boston. She comes up short. Good hustle back there by Ockmoody and good rebound by Kendall Paldy. Nesby with the basketball goes back to Paldy. She penetrates, gonna go to the dish. Callie Gregory blocks it out of bounds. Callie Gregory, the NWC co-player of the year last night, or last year. It's going to be Columbus Grove basketball under out of bounds. Akamuti to trigger it in. Look for something coming back to her under out of bounds. Right now just looking to get it in. Good penetration there, and she's going to draw the foul. That's Ruth Myers attacking the basket under control. And Crestview picks up their first foul, and it's going to be on Callie Gregory. Ruth Myers going to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. Th that's her first free throw of the year right there. Nicely done. Drills it. One for one on the season. See if she can keep that 100% intact. Does not. Kennedy Kreider in the game for Crestview. She picks up the rebound off the missed free throw. Casey Gregory. Both teams being patient here in the early going. Just yeah. feeling each other out. Yeah, neither team really rushing it. Uh, we have seen, you know, a couple shots off of some pressure released by this Crestview team. Um, but so far, deciding to pull it out, trying to get a good shot. We see with Maya Etzler out of the game at this point, Crestview looking to their guards a little bit. and. Nesby does a good job of corralling the rebound for the Bulldogs. Yeah, she does a nice job there. Ellie Klein with the penetration doesn't foul her. Nesby says, I'm going to go coast to coast. Kicks it out. But the errant pass 
Creates a turnover situation. Crestview picks it up. I thought Nesby did a good job down there of not, not um, fouling Klein when she penetrated, and then she got the rebound. Yeah, and that was the second turnover of the night is one of the things we'll keep looking at as Coach Schrader said, you know, that's a key for them is they got to take care of the ball and don't want to give Crestview some easy runouts. The foul is on number four for Columbus Grove, Elise Fortman. That's her first, team second. Ellie Klein will trigger it from under out of bounds. Looks at Callie Gregory. She fakes the handoff, penetrates baseline, kicks it out to Kawicki. She's going to set things up. Josie Kawicki wide open, takes a 15-footer, unable to connect. And the rebound by Elise Fortman. And really a smart play there by Nesby. Knew she couldn't get both hands on the ball, passed it to her teammate, Elise Fortman, to give this Bulldogs team the possession. Yeah, nice job of keeping the ball alive. And there she goes again, Lauren Achmoody. Three shots behind the arc. She's 100%, three for three. And that gives Grove the four-point lead with two and change left here in the first quarter. Lauren Achmoody. First team NWC selection going against the co-player of the year, Callie Gregory, might be trying to make a little statement here in the early going. Casey Gregory with the miss, Nesby there defensively again, does a nice job rotating and helping out. And the deflection goes off Crestview, Columbus Grove with the ball and the lead. Crestview gonna show 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. Whatever they do, they got to know where Lauren Achmoody is in the half court because she is scoring from any zip code right now. Josie Kowicki with the steal. Another turnover, as you said. That would be the third for Grove. Maya Etzler hits the front of the rim, doesn't go, but gets her own rebound. Goes inside to Haley McCoy. She turns. Nice little baseline jumper there by Haley McCoy. And with both of us being former postmen, that was nicely done. Yeah, you saw both post players passing it to each other. You like to see that as Haley McCoy did a great job of getting herself in a good position early, you know, and going over that left shoulder. And it was a nice little touch. The leading scorer for Crestview, Callie Gregory, just picked up her second personal foul. See what Coach Gregory decides to do, keep her in or take her out. Might have to yo-yo her a little bit so she doesn't pick up her third in the first half. Another turnover by Grove. Crestview with the basketball. And that was something, as you said, Co Coach Fortman said we're averaging around 19 turnovers a game. We can't have that happen if we want to be successful, especially against a quality program like Crestview. Callie Gregory with the step back, and she drills one. Ellie Klein is at the bench. Maybe Ellie's coming in for Callie, and Callie knows that. She, I'm going to get a shot off all I can, and she scores. Yeah, Callie doing a little bit of her own offense there as Crestview was able to work it from one side of the court to the other, but a deep three, about two feet behind the three-point line. So, as you said, she takes a break there. Don't want her to pick up that third foul. And Elise Fortman called for the foul for Grove. That's her second. Team's third. Klein to Kawicki. Maya Etzler gets doubled, kicks it out to Ellie Klein. Nicely defended uh, by Myers. Back into Etzler. She looks to go hard left, doesn't score. And we're going to have an over the back call. It's Casey Gregory picking up the foul. So the Gregory girls, Crestview has three fouls two on Callie, one on Casey. Maybe uh, mom and dad didn't feed them today, and they're really <laughs> hungry, being a little aggressive, Josiah. Yeah, but, you know, you have to give it to Nicole Nesby so far, doing a really good job of controlling that paint, you know, boxing out, not giving these post players of Crestview anything early. And what a take there by number 14, Allison Thompson. Thompson with the bucket, her first of the game. A one-point lead for Grove. Down to around 30 seconds here. Ellie Klein sets it up. You're right, Nesby, the six-foot sophomore. I remember watching her play last year. She has done nothing but continue to get better and really been on point here in the first quarter. Missed by Crestview. Josie Quickie with the offensive rebound. 
Deflected out of bounds by Grove. It'll be Crestview basketball. Kennedy Kreider back in the game for Haley McCoy. So Callie Gregory on the bench right now with two fouls. Storyline here early in the going. Into Etzler, doesn't shoot it. Deflected on the pass. Kreider picks it up. That's Casey Gregory, and she attacks the basket. And the foul's going to be on double deuces. Abby Stetchel, that's her first, team's fourth. Casey Gregory going to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line to shoot two. She's a 67% free throw shooter. First one's up, and it's in. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Home Style happens here. Josiah went to Lee's Famous Recipe in America's Friendliest City, Delphus, on Tuesday. <laughs> Took my wife. She had not been there in a long time, said it was the best chicken she'd ever had. Yeah, definitely uh, have to make some special trips every <laughs> once in a while to go pick up some Lee's chicken. Appreciate their sponsorship and... Grove now with the basketball. Under two, Ock Moody from 30. She tries to go Caitlin Clark there from Iowa, the outstanding player at the collegiate level, but comes up empty on that shot, her first miss from three. That's the end of the first quarter. Crestview with a 13 to 12 lead. You're watching high school girls basketball on WOSN. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WOSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WOSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wosn.tv, also available on Roku and Apple TV. Josiah, uh, nip and tuck first quarter, Crestview with the one-point lead. What do the stats say? Yeah, well, we look at our visitor first. It's really been the Lauren Ockmoody first quarter there. Three for four from beyond the arc, and that last one was, you know, 30 feet. So the only one she's missed there, but has nine points there in the first quarter. Shot one for two from the free throw line, so 50%. Okay, for Crestview, we look at field goal, only shot 23% in that first quarter, but was 100% from the free throw line. Ock Moody with the shot on the baseline, comes up short. Both teams, again, half court, solid man-to-man -man defense. you got to earn it tonight. Typical Northwest Conference encounter. Casey Gregory from deep. Hits the heel. Josie Kowicki gets a hand on it. But Kendall Paldy, she's got it. She's going to the rack, and she scores it. Nice drive by Kendall Paldy before the Crestview defense can get set. Grove with the one-point lead. Yeah, you got to like that offense there from Columbus Grove. Get the rebound. Don't even look to pass. See if you can attack the rimming. And Kendall Paldy did a good job there of going to her right and finishing on the opposite side of the rim. I think Coach Schrader's got to be pleased with how his team is playing right now. Coach Gregory wants to see a little more toughness execution from his squad. Maya Etzler looking to go strong air inside, but you got to give Nicole Nesby the nod. Great defense. Here comes Grove. Akmudi tries to go deep, deflected by Klein. Back to Akmudi. She misses it, but there it is. The ball seems to find the really good players. And Lauren Akmudi, she's got it. Sets her team up offensively. Around the wing. Stead Schulte with the basketball. Back to Akmudi. They go under the screen. She tries to make him pay. Crestview comes away lucky with the miss right there. Yeah, and really an open shot for Akmudi. You know, he'd like to see a little bit more challenge, you know, a hand in her face whenever she gets the shot. But she found some space, but just a little, left it a little short on that last shot. Ellie Klein with the basketball. Looks to penetrate. Goes to her left. Goes off the window. Kiss it and count it for Ellie Klein. Her first bucket of the game. And Coach Brian Schrader's going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. Crestview 15, Columbus Grove 14, Ellie Klein with the bucket.
The WSN Scores app is new and improved. Download the brand new app from your app store so you don't miss any of your favorite team's scores. The new WOSN app replaces the old app, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all the scores. Josiah Columbus Grove takes a timeout right there off the penetration by Ellie Klein. What's the purpose? What's the focus? What, what did Coach Schrader want to impart on his uh, Lady Cagers? Yeah, well, we've seen it a couple times tonight where Crestview's been able to drive to the basket, so I'm sure he's talking to his players and say, hey, we got to make it tougher than that for them to get a shot off, you know, and also be able to set up a good possession here. You know, with it being a tight game and an early, every possession matters, so want to get a good possession. I imagine it's going to be something for Lauren Ockmoody. Yeah, a little one-on-one -on -one driving line defense, probably discussing maybe some help side too. No one in the vicinity on that penetration. And you're right, Akmudi with the basketball right now, guarded closely by Casey Gregory. I'm sorry, that was Ellie Klein. Casey Gregory now guarding Abby Stetscholdy. Stetscholdy with the look from the corner. Overcooks it, but there's Akmudi on the miss. Her shot's off, but it's on the ground now. And again, Akmudi just a sense for the basketball. And that's going to be a jump ball. And because Grove had it at the beginning of the second quarter, Crestview's going to get possession. 15-14 Crestview on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Against the pressure, Callie Gregory attacks and passes to her teammate, Maya Etzler, and she is fouled. That is the first foul on Nicole Nesby. And Maya Etzler going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Again, our scoreboard sponsored by Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. Lodix Jewelry owned by Mike and Amanda Lickley. Maya Etzler comes up empty on the first free throw. Eyes, flies, makes the second. She's a 75% free throw shooter. Crestview with the two-point lead. Yeah, maybe that free throw going through the net will get her started a little bit. You know, Nesby's done a really good job of limiting her ability to get easy buckets. So maybe sometimes the shooters, you know, even post players, seeing that ball go through the net might get her going a little bit tonight. Couldn't agree with you more, Josiah. Great observation. That is her first point of the game. Nesby with the ball. She attacks Maya Etzler, and she scores it. Nesby with the penetration with the right hand picks up her first field goal. So both post players dent the scoring column on back-to-back -back possessions, one via the free throw, one via the field goal. Josie Kowicki, Grove giving her a lot of room out front. Callie Gregory. Crestview moving the ball. Josie Kowicki looking to attack. Nesby with the rebound. Here come the Bulldogs. Stet Schulte with the basketball. Now the general for Grove, Lauren Akmudi. Nesby sets the screen. Good rotation. Can't find anything. Kicks it out to her teammate, Kendall Palti. Stet Schulte with it. Both teams taking care of the basketball. Grove much better in the second quarter than the first. They go into Nesby, and there's going to be a foul with the cut across the face of the basket. The foul going to go to Maya Etzler. How many drills back in the day, Josiah, did you do where flash from the opposite side, and as a defender, you had to take away that cut. You had to be physical so you didn't get yourself in a position where you were caught behind and a foul could occur. Yeah, you know, as a post player working to get that hand high on a side to try to force it away, and we saw that there as Nesby did a good job with the cut, but Etzler went over top, but a good run out by the Knights. Kennedy Kreider picks up a field goal off of the deflection. And that's gonna be an illegal screen. Nicole Nesby picks up her second foul. So that is big. I think Coach Schrader will stay with her in the game. Nicole Nesby and Lauren Achmoody seldom come off the hardwood, and I think he's going to ride the pony here. She can't pick up her third. Yeah, and I think if I was Crestview, I would try to get the ball inside to try to force Nesby off of the court because she's done such a great job today controlling that paint, 
for the Bulldogs. And Crestview gets a wide open shot on the possession, just not able to knock it down. Casey Gregory comes up empty, then she goes full court pressure on Allison Thompson, and there's a steal. Casey Gregory gets a quick one for the Lady Knights. Back in Lauren Ockmoody's hands. Grove looks much more comfortable when she's bringing the ball across the timeline. But the double team making it tough on her, and that's going to be a foul on Crestview, and Ellie Klein picks up the personal. That's Ellie's first, team second of the quarter, and Coach Schrader's going to take his second timeout in the second quarter. We'll take one with him. It's Northwest Conference undefeated action as far as both teams being two and zero, and you're watching it on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium, Columbus Grove, Crestview, 20 to 16 advantage for the Lady Knights on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Coach Schrader with the timeout. Play was getting a little uh, ragged and the pace was picking up and Coach Schrader says we're going to calm things down. Yeah, Crestview is getting a little bit of momentum, couple buckets in a row. Columbus Grove almost turning the ball over, doing a great job uh, on that last possession as you saw Coach Gregory, you know, really getting after his girls to get after it on the defensive end. So a good timeout by Coach Schrader to kind of calm his players down. You know, only a four-point game, but these possessions matter in these tight games. As you said, both teams undefeated in the NWC. You know, this is a critical game for both teams who want to stay in the title race in the Northwest Conference. Stay in pace with Delphus Jefferson. Lauren Ockmoody with the basketball. And we're going to have a foul, I believe, on Kennedy Kreider. Nope. Yes, Kennedy Kreider. She picks up her first. Hedging out there. Made contact with Ockmoody. Her first team third. Ockmoody with the inbound pass from Palti. Going to bring it over to the left side. Nesby look for her to set a ball screen. Up she comes. Now she's going to roll. And we're going to have another foul called. And that foul is going to be on Crestview's number four, Ellie Klein. That's her second. Team's fourth. So Grove will be in the two-shot foul situation for fouls the rest of the quarter. Akmudi. Kicks it into the left side. Here comes Paulding. Good penetration. Out to Myers. Back in Ockmoody's hands. Going into Nesby. And she can't quite reel it in. That's going to be another turnover, but we haven't seen many of those from Grove here in the second quarter, especially Josiah. Yeah, and Grove got it inside, which is what they're looking for to try to get it into Nesby, especially with Kennedy Kreider picking up the, that foul, seeing if they can get another foul on the post player, but unable to kind of corral it, bounce the ball off of the end line. So now it's Crestview ball up four. Up four with a chance to expand that lead. Biggest lead of the game. Ellie Klein with the ball on the right side. Ball reversal. Josie Kowicki wide open. She takes a 15-footer. Doesn't score it. Nesby with the rebound. And then we're going to have a jump ball as Kennedy Kreider has come off the bench to give Crestview some good minutes. But the jump ball stays with Columbus Grove. Ockmoody down the left side. Coach Schrader calls the set out. She centers the basketball. Going to get a screen and then a flare screen. Wide open look for Paulding. Good play. Paulding. Unable to score it, here comes Casey Gregory. She's gonna go coast to coast, and that's a charge on Casey Gregory. Nicely taken by Lauren Ockmoody. She doesn't just shoot it, Josiah. Set her up, takes the offensive charge. Yeah, Lauren Ockmoody did a great job of seeing that play develop, getting her body in front, in a good position, takes that charge, and now we see this Crestview team, three of their guards all have two fouls. That's a storyline here with 1.08 left in the second quarter. Nesby going to work inside on Kreider, one-on-one. -on -one. Nice spin to the 10, and with the pin and the left hand, nicely done. Nesby picks up her second field goal. 
Yeah, good move going to her left hand. Don't see that very often from post players anymore. Able to go to that left, cut this lead now down to two. 45 seconds left in the quarter. Not in a situation where you're holding it for the last shot, but you're looking for a quality look. If it gets down to around 15, maybe Crestview will pull it out and play for the last one then. But right now, still looking to score. Ellie Klein attacking on the right side. Nice pass to Kreider. She goes up with the eight-footer, doesn't score it. Here comes Grove. Chance to tie her go-ahead here at the end of the quarter. Paulding. Nesby from deep off the left side. Going to give Crestview a chance for the last look as Ellie Klein reels in that rebound. Good look from Nesby. Just don't know if you want it right there in that situation as now Crestview has a chance to score with seven seconds. Running her set. Kowicki, they're, guard they're not guarding her, staying away from her. And that's going to be how things end as Crestview ends on a turnover. They don't get a look. After two quarters are in the book, it's Crestview 20, Columbus Grove 18. We got ourselves a good old good one, Josiah. And you're watching it here on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium where we've got ourselves a tight one. Crestview 20, Columbus Grove 18. Two quality programs, two quality coaches. Head coach Brian Schrader in his 11th season. 193 wins, 67 losses overall. Columbus Grove was sixth NWC championships, their last one in 1920. For Crestview, Mark Gregory in his eighth season. 136 wins, 48 losses. Crestview was 17 Northwest Conference championships, their last one in 2021. Josiah, a really good first half between both teams. Uh, thoughts and uh, some stats, what do they tell us? Yeah, well, just looking at scoring uh, for the visiting team, you know, in that first quarter, it was all Lauren Ockmoody with three threes for nine points, leads all scorers tonight so far, and her teammate, Nicole Nesby with four, you know, in that second quarter is really those role players stepping up outside of Ock Moody, who didn't score in the second quarter, you know, keeping this game close, making it tough on this home Crestview Knights team. And as we look at the Crestview Knights, you know, really balanced scoring, uh, four points from Casey Greger, Josie Kowick, Kowicki also had four points, and uh, five points from Callie Gregory to lead this Crestview Knights team, but she had two fouls early, kind of threw her off, had to really focus on not picking up that third foul. As we look at some of the other stats uh, for the visiting team, field goal percentage for Columbus Gro Grove shooting 39%. Free throws shot 50% from the free throw line. Had eight turnovers. We talked about as the keys early in the game, you know, have to limit those turnovers. Come in averaging 19, had eight, so 16 if, they, if that holds true for the remainder of the game. For the home team, Crestview had four turnovers, did a good job of taking care of the ball, but didn't shoot the ball very well. 27% in that first half, had seven rebounds, but shot 83%, five for six from the free throw line. So Coach Rayner probably talked about again, let's let's take care of the basketball, not turn it over. Coach Gregory, hey, let's shoot the rock a little bit better. And we want to thank our stat men, officially unofficial, Brad Hughes and Steve Holden doing a nice job giving us some stats to share with our viewers. Crestview with the basketball to begin the third quarter. Casey Gregory with it out front. Callie Gregory trying to post, nothing there. Ellie Klein. Gets the back cut to Gregory. Ellie Klein with great vision finds Callie Gregory and good way to get your leading scores started for the team with an easy bucket. Yeah, probably one of those adjustments made at halftime by Coach Gregory. We got to get the ball into our leading scorer's hands, Callie Gregory, and they do that there, posting up both Callie and Maya but finding Callie on the backside and a great pass to give her an easy bucket. Like you said, hopefully that gets her going a little bit, you know, now that she saw the ball go through that net. Josie Kowicki picks up the personal, just a little too physical in there on the uh, handoff. Her first, Crestview's first here in the third quarter. Crestview staying in the man-to-man. -man. Josie Kowicki going full face guard on Lauren Achmuddy, but she has the ball now. 
Double screen up top, one on each side. There's that flare. We saw them run that earlier. Nice look by Jade Seeker. Unable to come up with the bucket. And it goes out of bounds. Crestview with possession. Well, Early sub for the Lady Knights. Kennedy Kreider in for Maya Etzler. Yeah, and we've seen that play a couple times by this Bulldogs team. You know, so much of the effort is on stopping Lauren Ockmoody that this backside is wide open. Just 0 for 2 on that play, not being able to knock down that open three. Callie Gregory on the wing. Guarded by Palti, looking to attack, goes baseline. She scores it. Really good defense by Palti, just better offense by Gregory. Yeah, Gregory being a little bit more aggressive. I'm sure that was part of the talk, too, is you got to look for your shot. We want you to have the ball in your hand and a turnover now early for this Bulldogs team. Josie Kowicki to Kreider. Callie Gregory behind the arc. Hits the heel. Ellie Klein with the board. Back out to Gregory. Klein on Nesby looking to go show her quickness against the post player, and she draws the foul on Nesby. Tries to go with the reverse layup, and that's the third personal on Nicole Nesby. So she goes from being out of foul trouble at the beginning of the third with two fouls. Now she has three. Again, I think Coach Schrader stays with her, but she's got to be careful. Yeah, you know, for Coach Schrader, not really a deep bench. Doesn't have a whole lot of size coming off of that bench, so... You know, she's got to just play smart, play straight up, establish her position down there in the post and not reach and pick up that fourth, that big fourth foul. Ellie Klein picks up both free throws. And there's a steal. Here comes Ellie Klein going coast to coast. Misses it, but there's Josie Kowicki on the back side. Johnny on the spot. And Coach Schrader's going to take a full timeout as Crestview gets a good start to the third quarter. We'll take a timeout with him off of the Josie Kowicki offensive rebound. Stick back. You're watching it all on WOSN. TV44 and WOSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate Here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. On the Lottix Jewelry Scoreboard, Crestview with an 8-0 run to begin the third quarter. It's 28-18 Lady Knights, and Coach Schrader takes the timeout, Josiah. Yeah, well, for Crestview, it's been that combination of Callie Gregory and Columbus Grove turning the ball over. Two big turnovers that led to easy buckets for this Crestview Knights team. That's that eight-point lead now has expanded now to ten points because of that 8-0 run, as you said. Yeah, the live ball turnovers. Grove had turnovers in the first half, mostly in the first quarter, but they were the dead ball variety. Crestview um, had to bring the ball down. Grove able to set up their defense here in the third quarter. It's been a couple breakouts, and Crestview's cashed in. Paldy with the basketball, penetrating to her right. Good stand-up, wall-up defense by Callie Gregory. Here she comes, finds her teammate, Casey Gregory, sister to sister. Casey Gregory with the bucket. Callie Gregory with the dime. Ock Moody, she's going to have to look to be aggressive offensively right now for her team. She averages 20 a game, spins to the 10, kicks it to her teammate. A good look for Ruth Myers, but she is unable to come up with it. Crestview looking to expand the lead. It's been a good start to the third quarter for the Lady Knights. Ellie Klein with the back cut. Unable to come away with the bucket. Nesby playing defense. Ock Moody. Thought, yeah, I thought, ooh, I thought she might just pull. Again, I watched that Iowa-Michigan State the other night where Caitlin Clark scored at the end. Really fun girls basketball. And that ball as Ellie Klein tried to go coast to coast. Ock Moody gets a hand on it, and it goes off of Klein. It'll be Grove basketball. Yeah, and good defense there by Lauren Ock Moody. Got ahead of the play, got her hand on the ball. The official was right there to see it. Once she slapped it away, the ball goes off of the knee of the Crestview player, and... You know, really a big possession here. Down 12, 
know, Akmudi hasn't got a shot yet here in this second half. Have to find a way to get her an open look. Josie Kawicki up on her. You're right, Grove. They're in Kenny Loggins' land. They're in the danger zone. They need to get something good happening here offensively. They haven't scored coming out of halftime, and we're halfway through the fourth quarter. Kennedy Cry or through the third quarter, excuse me. Kennedy Kreider picks up their personal, her second. Crestview's second of the third quarter. Under out of bounds, Akamudi triggers it in. Nesby with the nice fake looks to attack. Callie Gregory rotates over nicely. There's Poldy with the penetration. The hoop and the harm. Ellie Klein tries to rotate, rotate over and take a charge. Unable to do so. I like the aggressive, aggressive play there by Kendall Poldy. Yeah, Kendall Poldy able to drive to that right. You know, finish through some contact. You know, big bucket for this Grove team. Kind of had to slow the momentum of this Crestview team down as she misses the free throw. But once we hear go, Crestview looking to run if possible. Have gotten some easy buckets here in the third quarter off of transition, but now they decide to slow it down as Columbus Grove comes out and it looks like a 2-3 zone. 2-3 zone, talking to Coach Schrader prior to the game. He said, we want to play man-to-man, -man, but if we have to go to the zone, it'll be the 2-3 variety. And Coach Gregory says, you're going to the zone, I'm going to the whiteboard. Coach Gregory with the timeout. Crestview's first of the game. We'll take it with him. It's exciting. Northwest Conference basketball, lady style on WOSM. Check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Our JV game tonight, it was a two-quarter style game due to low numbers. And the final score, 10-7 to in Crestview's favor. Crestview JV coach Megan Lotzenheiser. Columbus Grove JV coach Matt Meyerholtz, varsity assistants Drew Barto for Grove and Jeremy Best for Crestview. So Grove take or Crestview takes the timeout as Grove shows that two three zone. Do you think Coach Schrader will go back to man or stay in the zone? Yeah, I was thinking that during the break if they would come out, but it looks like they're probably going to stay in that two three or maybe a matchup. Not really sure. Go back to man to man as you said. Yeah, I believe it's man to man. That's a good coaching move, you know. Coach Gregory took the timeout to draw something up against that 2-3 zone. It might be just one possession only here for Grove to play man-to-man, -man, and then we'll go back to zone, but we'll see how it plays. But right now, they are back in their patented man-to-man -man defense. Crestview swings it. Klein with the entry into Callie Gregory, and she was fouled from behind by Kendall Palti. Her first of the game. Ellie Klein will trigger it. Into Callie Gregory. Doesn't quite square up, but Maya Etzler with the board. And she has the opportunity to get the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Count the two-point bucket. And the foul is on. Kendall Palti and Maya Etzler at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, help it happens here. Etzler, that's her first field goal of the game, second free throw. She now has four points in the contest. Crestview with the 13-point lead. Akmudi, yeah, she needs to be aggressive, but Josie Kawicki is just as aggressive defensively, making it tough. She can't find that open look. Yeah, Josie Kawicki doing a great job just keeping it, keeping her in front, making it tough on her, even when she does that step back move, which she's so good at, still getting a hand in her face and just not finding a whole lot of room and forcing this Columbus Grove team, their role players, to have to step up. And we're seeing that gap widen because Lauren Akmudi hasn't been getting the shot she typically gets in a game. Tried to enter the ball into Nesby right there. Maya Etzler stepped over the top to deflect it out of bounds. Grove maintains possession. Nesby looking to go baseline. Callie Gregory rotates over, cuts it off. Nesby looking to find Akmudi. Another deflection by Crestview. So Crestview's defense, obviously they have scored here 
in the third quarter, but they've only allowed two points. Their defense has stepped up. Nesby looks to go up and over my Etzler, unable to do so. Callie Gregory looking to feed Ellie Klein. They don't connect. It's a turnover on the Lady Knights. Yeah, Coach Gregory doesn't like to see turnovers, but that's one of those being aggressive, trying to get the ball up. You know, she was open, running forward, just not able to connect. So, you know, he head down, but then he saw him clap to say, hey, good look. Let's get it next time. Nesby reverses it to Stetscholdy. Up front to Siefker. Akmudi with the basketball. Josie Kowicki gets her across the arm, but you got to give credit to Kowicki. As we saw in the first quarter, Lauren Akmudi got things started right for Grove with three threes. It has been a dry spell, and she really hasn't had a whole lot of shots to even get up since then, Josiah. Well, and I think that's been the change in this game is, you know, she found a little bit of space there to start the game. As you said, three threes early on, you know, and then it clicked for this Crestview defense as, hey, we, we have to be in her face. We can't make it easy on her. And we see face guarding now by Kowicki, not allowing her to get anything easy. Josie Kowicki, the MRP for Crestview, in my opinion, the maximum role player, I think, for Columbus Grove. That's a tie between Stetsholdy and Poldy right now. Stetsholdy on the defense, but had to step aside as Ellie Klein was able to get to the basket. It's another bucket for the Lady Knights, and they have a 15-2 quarter here thus far. Coach Schrader takes the timeout. That's his fourth. We'll take it with him. You're watching it all here on WOSN. Crestview with a 35 to 20 lead with 1.38 to go in the third quarter. Coach Schrader takes his fourth timeout. It's been balanced scoring for the Lady Knights here in the third quarter. Maya Etzler with three, Casey Gregory two, Ellie Klein four, Callie Gregory four, Josie Kowicki two. You spread it around like that, that makes it really tough on your opponent. Yeah, and we see them getting a lot of easier buckets here in this third quarter. A lot of transition buckets, you know, driving, being a little bit more aggressive to the basket. Didn't see that a lot in that first half, but we've seen it here. And But you got to keep talking about this Crestview defense really shutting down Lauren Ockmoody. And once again, another hand in the passing lane for Josie Kowicki, you know, has the tough assignment of guarding Lauren Ockmoody and so far doing a great job against her. Yeah, Lauren Ockmoody, she knows that two thirds of this planet Earth is covered by water. Right now she thinks the other third or more than that is covered by Josie Kowicki because Josie is all over her, making it tough. Grove with the ball. Nesby on the baseline, nothing there. Lauren Akmudi with the basketball now. One on one with Kowicki. See if she looks to put a move on. Nope, gives it up. Very unselfish players, Lauren Akmudi. Deflected again by Crestview. Out of bounds, so Grove maintains possession. Well, we see Columbus Grove changing it up a little bit. Now they're trying to post up Lauren Achmudi, seeing find any way they can to get her the ball. You know, known for her outside shot, but now a great pass in there by Net to Nesby, unable to finish. Yeah, nice over the top pass. Uh -huh. Nesby comes up empty handed. Ellie Klein with the basketball, running the point. 25 seconds here in the third on the Lodic scoreboard. Klein brings it to the middle, probing. Curl cut by Casey Gregory. Bounce pass to Maya Etzler. She took her dribble, kicks it out opposite. Down to 12. Klein looks inside. Goes to Etzler at the elbow. Back to Klein from three. Hits the heel, no good. Can Grove get a breakout? Akmudi's gonna get the bucket. Nice observation by Abby Stenschel to give her the assist. Akmudi gets her first point since the first quarter, her first bucket. And that is the end of our third quarter. Crestview 35, Columbus Grove 22. Stenschel to Akmudi to finish the third.
Loddox Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years, serves as our scoreboard sponsor for tonight's game. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Loddix.com. Josiah Crestview with a 15-4 to third quarter to break this thing open. What do the stats show us? Yeah, really a tale of really the, the first half in that third quarter for Columbus Grove. Only four points, as you said. Shot two for eight from the field there, 0 for 1 from the free throw line. Had three turnovers. You know, really wasn't bad after those first two turnovers. Just not able to knock down any shots. And then for the Crestview, and there's Ock Moody. As you said, got to get her going in this game. But for Crestview in that third quarter, 6 for 10. Shot 60% from the field. Only had two turnovers, three for three from the line, but had nine rebounds compared to two for Columbus Grove. So Crestview with the basket after Ock Moody gets Grove on the scoreboard here to begin the fourth. That's good medicine for the Bulldogs. McCallie Gregory attacks the rim. She draws contact, and that's going to be a personal foul on Columbus Grove, and that's on Kendall Palti, her third Callie Gregory going to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line to shoot two. Knights up by 11, make it 12. As Callie Gregory, the again, second leading free throw shooter for the Lady Knights at 81%. Good on both of those. 81% is pretty good. The leading free throw shooter is Ellie Klein at 96%. 24 for 25. Yeah, I saw that looking at the stats, and <laughs> that's a pretty good free throw shooter. But as you said, 81%. It's going to go up, 4 for 4 on the night. Ock Moody inside. Grove has made a concerted effort to get the ball to her on the block. Callie Gregory stepped through and scored. <laughs> Callie Gra Gregory being more aggressive offensively here at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Knights have four points in the stanza. She has all four of them. Ock Moody off the flare screen. Josie Kowicki fights through it. Coach Schrader asking for more movement away from the basketball. And it's a nice entry pass into Nesby. Give the assist to Jade Siefker. Nesby with the bucket. Yeah, we've seen it now from Columbus Grove in this fourth quarter. A bucket by Ock Moody, a bucket by Nesby. We need to see that a little more often if Columbus Grove wants to climb back into this game. You know, but for Crestview, we see Callie Gregory being aggressive. We saw that in the start of the third quarter. We've seen it here in the fourth quarter already, looking for her shot, and it's the outcomes have been good. Crestview with the basketball. Grove playing some sticky man-to-man -man here. Casey Gregory penetrates baseline, and that's going to be a charge. Lauren Ockmoody takes her second charge of the night. And, man, if I'm a teammate uh, of a leading scorer on my team and I see her take two charges, it, makes, it motivates me to be that much more aggressive at both ends of the floor because they're not just in it for the points. They're in it for the total team effort, and Lauren Ockmoody does it right there, Josiah. Well, and that just shows how well-rounded of a basketball player she is. It's not just on the offensive end. She's willing to do the things on the defensive side to give her team another possession. And we just saw that here. Two charges and a step back three as she's falling down. We're starting to see Lauren heat up a little bit. Yeah, Lauren Ockmoody, step back three against Josie Kowicki. Good defense, better offense. Coach Gregory's going to take a timeout. That's the second for the Lady Knights. So, Callie Gregory, Lauren Ockmoody, two uh, Northwest Conference players recognized last year's first teamers. Uh, the cream is rising to the top here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and that's when you want your best players to step up, and we've seen that tonight here. Callie Gregory, you know, was big in that third quarter. You know, may not have made every shot, but she was assisting. She was getting rebounds. She was helping on defense and being aggressive and finding her shot on the offensive end. And now we're starting to see Lauren Ockmoody realizing, you know, if she doesn't start stepping up, this game could get away from this Columbus Grove team. You know, a 10-point deficit, but, you know, a couple buckets here. You know, with that three ball in basketball, you know how quickly you can get back into a game. You're right. It's a 10-point deficit. It was 13 to start the fourth. And, again, these two players, the math does math. Lauren Ockmoody, leading scorer at 20 points per game, leading free throw shooter for Grove at 83%. She leads the squad behind the arc at 42%. 
and overall field goal percentage at 51%. Averages three assists a game, four steals a game. Callie Gregory leads the Crestview Lady Knights in scoring at 16 points per game. Second at free throw line at 81%. Leads the team with five assists per game, 37% from deep. And both are on display tonight. And really providing the fans and you, our viewers, with some excellent basketball. Lauren Achmoody and Callie Gregory. Ellie Klein splits and scores it off the window. She's been very effective at that this year, going strong. What I like about her, she just gets her feet set and she gets her shoulders squared to the backboard. Yeah, we've seen that a couple times tonight. Her going to that left hand and Achmoody once again draining that three. You know, Crestview two-pointer, come back, Columbus Grove three-pointer, so cutting the lead now down to nine. Yeah, you can't stop her. You can only hope to contain her right now. Lauren Achmoody dialed in. Casey Gregory gives up the three, looks to penetrate, and there's going to be contact and a foul called on number 14 for Columbus Grove. Allison Thompson, that's her first personal, second in the quarter for Columbus Grove, under out of bounds for the Lady Knights. Four across the free throw line. Kick it out to Callie Gregory, guarded by Palti. Gregory takes the deep three, nothing but cotton. Callie Gregory with her second three of the game. Now it's Achmoody's turn. Yeah, Callie Gregory, you know, seeing Lauren Achmoody hit a couple threes and go, you can do it, so can I. Knocks down the big three to extend this lead now back to 12. Her teammate, number five, takes the shot, Ruth Myers. Callie Gregory kicks it over to Kate or to Ellie Klein. Ellie in the paint. Got caught in no man's land a little bit there, and we're going to have a jump ball. Good defense by Grove. Ball stays with the Lady Knights. 44-32 on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Crestview in the lead. Going to have an illegal screen. Maya Etzler called for the illegal screen. It's a dead ball turnover then against the Lady Knights. That's Etzler's second, Crestview's second. Halfway through the fourth, Canto. Yeah, the official is standing right there, and you see that more often. You throw that hip out there, they're kind of looking for it, and we saw that now with Etzler picks up the foul, and now she'll be sitting on the bench. Again, I think it's a situation, too, where the screener, the foul is on the screener, but if you're dribbling the ball or if you're going off that screen, you got to be, you got to be right up against it. It's got to be shoulder to shoulder. And a lot of times there's space and the defender can step through just a little bit. And then it's awkward, there's contact, and it's on the screener. And right there we have a foul against number 21 for the Lady Knights, Josie Kowicki. That is her third. Lauren Achmoody at the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line, shooting three, empty on the first one. Again, leading free throw shooter for Grove at 83%. The second one's up, and it's good. Well, just going back to that, just remember how many times going off screens, you know, as you said, you know, having as a post player, having those guards coming off and getting mad when they didn't go shoulder to shoulder, you know, because a lot of times you would get the the foul called on because we didn't do that. So it's so important. It's those fundamentals that coaches work on every single day. Do they apply in the game? And we saw it there. Fundamentals, Josiah, but then also you can't be too mad because the only way you're going to get the ball is if that guard throws it to you. If, <laughs> if he's upset with you, he's not going to throw it to you. Sometimes, you know, it's a team game, but yeah, just jokingly, you got to make sure you know where your bread is buttered. And as a post player, you got to have good friend, be a good friend with the guards. Coach Gregory calls the set. Going to swing it, look for Callie Gregory underneath, and then you've got Kowicki coming off a double. Good defense by Columbus Grove. Yeah, good defense, and Crestview not really in any hurry as we see a timeout by Coach Gregory, but not in any hurry, up 10 with three minutes to go, trying to run their offense, but we saw Coach Gregory seeing his, his player in a little bit of trouble, a good timeout. Yep, Crestview takes the timeout break. We'll take a break with them. Ladies style basketball on WOSN.
Three minutes left in our fourth quarter. It's a 10-point lead for Crestview over Columbus Grove. Thus far, though, in the fourth quarter, Columbus Grove with more points, outscoring Crestview 12 to nine. Crestview takes its sideline out of bounds. Coach Gregory with the timeout. Yeah, and we'll see Columbus Grove now, knowing that the deficit is 10, as we see here a double by Auk Moody, seeing if they can force some turnovers here to get the ball back on offense. Yep, they've got to do some things, maybe a little uncharacteristic defensively down 10. There's a back cut and Callie Gregory picks up the bucket. Two points for Gregory. Ock Moody with the basketball, extends that lead back to 12. Lauren at the elbow, kicks it. Paulty with it. Stet Schulte, Ock Moody. Paulty with the penetration. Nesby there to clean it up. Nicely done. Good nose for the ball. Nesby picks up her seventh and eighth point of the game. Josie Kwicki catches that pass. And there's going to be a foul called on Lauren Ock Moody. Just her second of the game. Josie Kowicki going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Kowicki a 55% free throw shooter. Yeah, and both Crestview and Grove only have three fouls here in the fourth quarter. An opportunity here for Crestview to extend this lead as they do with the first one being knocked down. Josie Kowicki picks up her seventh point of the game. Thus far in the fourth quarter, Lauren Akmudi with 21 points. Callie Gregory with 18. Quickie unable to connect on the second one. It goes out of bounds. Grove will have the basketball. 2.06 left on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Crestview up 11. Akmudi with the basketball. Nesby with the screen up top. On the reversal, deflected out of bounds by Callie Gregory. One fifty-seven defense for both teams has been sticky all night. There's a deep three. Stetschulte unable to connect. Callie Gregory with the basketball. Both of these teams play great defense. Crestview has had nine of their ten games. The opponents score underneath forty points, forty or less. And then Columbus Grove six of their nine games they have held their opponent under forty. And we said their defensive average is Grove at thirty-two. Crestview at 32. Callie Gregory triggering it in. Looking to continue to attack. Not going to put it in the deep freeze. No need to. Gregory with a little fade away. Nice touch. Yeah, good power dribble there. In the paint. Created a little bit of space there. And as Columbus Grove looks to get it into Nesby. And a wide open shot. Nobody else besides Auk Moody has been able to connect from beyond the arc, but we got a tie up here down on the baseline, and the ball will go back to Columbus Grove. Yeah, Auk Moody, as you said, from deep is connected. That was uh, Allison Thompson with a good look from three. And the inside-out action. I always like when the ball goes inside and you kick it out, you have your feet set. The Thompson had a good look. It did not go. Next games for both of these squads, Columbus Grove will take on Ottaville in a PCL contest on Saturday at home. And Crestview will next be back in action at Antwerp on Tuesday. So again, a key early league, you know, early league conference uh, contest here, Josiah. And with 116, it looks like Crestview is going to come away with the W. But a lot of things can happen in this league. Again, Delphus Jefferson uh, going to have something to say about it. And so his Allen East uh, uh, game where Columbus Grove came away with a overtime, double overtime victory by two points over Allen East. Crestview yet to play the Mustangs. There's a look by Stetchel. He doesn't go. And as we said... In the first half, the ball seemed to fall into Ock Moody's hands. Here in the second half, it seems like Callie Gregory has been much more involved. Yeah, and I think that's been the biggest adjustment for this Crestview Knights offense in the second half was Callie Gregory just looking for her shot, being aggressive, getting down in the post, 
finding those easy shots. And, we, and now we got a timeout by Coach Gregory. Wants to get his team set for this pressure coming up. Yeah. Coach Gregory's going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. Crestview 49, Grove 36, all on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium. And Coach Gregory takes that time out. It looked like Crestview was attempting to put the ball in the deep freeze a little bit. Casey Gregory got into a little bit of trouble. Coach Gregory takes a time out. Yeah, well, I'm sure each coach is, has practiced this. What do we do when we're up? How do we, if you want to call it stall, take time off the clock here? And I'm sure Coach is just saying, be strong with the ball make good passes, come to every pass. you got to be able to come meet it. You don't want to allow that space for the defender to get a hand in there. But now we'll see, you know, with Columbus Grove now having four fouls, uh, next foul will put them at the free throw line. Excellent observations all night long from one Josiah Stober. I'm Dave Bowen, and Crestview has the basketball, and they're looking to foul, but they get it in Callie Gregory's hands. Hockmoody's going to foul Gregory and Gregory will go to the free throw line. As you said, Josiah, that's the fifth foul for Ock Moody. Callie Gregory, the 81% free throw shooter, goes to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line to shoot two, two, makes the first one, Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. You need a caterer, call Lee's for all your catering needs. Gregory with a second of two, about a foot behind the free throw line. But when you shoot 81%, you can stand wherever you want. Yeah, absolutely. You know, two big free throws, you know, doesn't matter probably in, but when you want to ice a team, and what a shot by Warren Ockmoody with that step back three. Almost got the ball there on the turnover. Now getting the ball into Callie Gregory's hand, and that's who you want it at the end of the game to. Great shot Ice. by Lauren Ockmoody, you're right. Step back three. Again, she's a team player. Maybe in the third quarter when Crestview was making that run, she could have been looking for the shot, but you've got to give the Crestview defense and Josie Kowicki a lot of credit. She just could not find it then, but boy, that is a pretty shot. And you don't just step into the gym on November 1st and make that shot. Yeah, that's, you know, years and years of practice and time in the gym. And as you said, especially that step back, it's such a hard shot. The momentum's going away, and she just got a smooth stroke. Almost every time it looks like it's going in. Looked like it might have been tipped. Yeah, Ellie Klein was able to recover on that step back on that one, maybe get a hand on it. Down to 10 seconds. Grove's not going to foul, and Crestview is going to come away with the W. Some... Final thoughts from you, and we're going to look to have Mark Gregory on as well, the winning coach for Crestview. But first, Josiah, some final thoughts on this game. Yeah, it really came down to the adjustments I think Crestview made at halftime. You saw it. Callie Gregory came out aggressive, ends up the game 23 points on the game. But, you know, she was looking for a shot inside, outside. She was driving. She was passing. You know, I think that was the biggest adjustment. You know, but you saw it from this Crestview team, a well-rounded team, lots of players able to score the ball. And then defensively, we got to give a shout out to Josie Kowicki. You know, it's hard to say, hey, my, my defender, my the person that I was guarding scored 24 points and I did a great job, but she did a great job tonight on Lauren Ockmoody, you know, making it tough. Those shots, you know, well beyond the arc, forcing her to take those difficult shots. So, but a well-rounded team and a great win by this Crestview Knights team. Crestview with the win improves to 10-1, and 3-0 and in the Northwest Conference. Grove 9-1, and 2-1 and in conference action. We'll take a break on WOSN and we'll be back with head coach Mark Gregory. Welcome back to Crestview High School in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium, where tonight the Crestview Lady Knights have defeated the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 52-39. It is my pleasure to have head coach Mark Gregory here with us for some post-game discussion. Coach, 
great win for your Lady Knights basketball team. I'm going to go there right away. Second and third quarter, Lauren Achmudi only scores one field goal. I think you got to give a lot of credit to your entire defense, but especially Josie Kowicki. Absolutely. Josie did such a great job tonight. And, and again, at times she had a couple fouls on her, so she was having to play with that, having to worry about that. And uh, she just did such a great job, just tough and gritty against a really good high school player. And uh, Lauren Achmudi is, is one of the best in our conference, probably one in Northwest Ohio. And, and uh, I, thought, I thought Josie did such a great job. We looked at the score sheet and see that she scored 24 points, but she earned every single one of those 24 points, other than maybe at the end of the, end of the half there or in the quarter. But, uh, yeah, shout out to, to Josie Quicker and also to Ellie Klein. Ellie Klein did a great job when she was out there with her as well. You know, and some of the things we've been preaching about is just our toughness and physical and I thought we stepped up to play tonight. Agree with you totally. Yeah, Lauren had 24 points, but she had to earn them. And in that second and third quarter, especially that third quarter, which you won 15 to four, was rather pivotal. But in that fourth quarter, Callie Gregory, she steps up to the table and says, it's time for me to eat. She scores 18 points in the second half, has 23 overall. Callie steps up. Was there a little bit of a discussion at halftime about taking the bull by the horns? Not really, not really. It's just being a senior leader, you know, and she, she took it upon herself there in the, in the third quarter, especially in fourth quarter, and just said, give me the ball, give me the ball, and, and we did. And uh, I thought our teammates teammates did a great job of finding her in, in situations, and there was times where they, she just said, get out of the way. And uh, that's why I'm so proud of her. She's grown so much as a player and a person and a teammate, and uh, it, was, it was special to watch. Two really good players battling out here. And uh, again, it, you hate to see anybody lose, but uh, it, it, it was a really good game. It sure was. And then finally, I think as a team, you guys took care of the Rock. You only had eight turnovers against full court pressure from Columbus Grove. Would you like to speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. You know, especially towards the end when they're starting to rat it up a little bit and double team us a little bit, I thought we did a really good job of taking care of the basketball. And again, we haven't been in a lot of those situations where teams are starting to get up in us at the end of the game and we've got to, you know, allow them to foul us and we got to take care of the basketball. We got to take the ball out of bounds and, and cut hard. And again, that was that was really good for us to do that. And and I credit Chromos Grove so much, their coaching staff and their players, they just play so hard and uh, made that game so difficult on us and you know that's why they're good every year two outstanding programs Crestview comes away with the W tonight thanks coach for stepping in and talking to us a little bit here your final score Crestview 52 Columbus Grove 39 with the win Crestview improves to 10 and 1 3 and 0 in the Northwest Conference Columbus Grove 8 and 2 2 and 1 in conference action I want to thank Austin Fleming, the athletic director at Crestview, and we also want to thank Megan Sherrick, our camera person, and she'll be doing the editing of this production, and my partner, Josiah Stober, and again, Coach Mark Gregory, and for Dave Bowen, until next time, may all of your jumpers hit nothing but the bottom of the net. So long, everybody.